Hello, welcome to my first 3D printing related video. I know I've been teasing the uh, Monoprice Select Mini V2 printer for quite some time now. And well, I'm not putting together a fancy video about it quite yet. I do want to talk about some 3D printing and 3D printing something because this video is going to be about me 3D printing something. So. 3D printing is all about solving problems, in my opinion. And, and a lot of times when you solve one problem, you run into another problem. I 3D printed this little handle for my Yi Light action camera. Check out the video on it here. Because I wanted a nice little handle I could grab on and hold it with and record with. So I 3D printed this, which is for a GoPro, which is what the case on this uses. So. I could quite easily just put that together, line up the holes, grab the little thingy, get it in there, twist it together, and there we go. Now I've got a nice little holder for this camera that I can, you know, grab and hold the camera with. But you see, there is a bit of a problem, and that is the camera itself uses a tripod screw mount on the bottom of it as you can see right there so that meant that it would not be very easy or it's actually impossible right now in order to attach this on here which you'd want to do because if say you're vlogging with the camera you're not able to get clear audio out of it because the microphone is blocked off so I solved that by 3D printing this, or at least I thought I solved it. This is a 3D printed thing that just screws in there and gives the camera a GoPro style mount at the bottom so that then I can put this together like this. And have it on here but the problem is this is loose there's no way you can actually you know use this it's more bad gimbal than anything so clearly this needs some tweaking so I made a tweaked model that should work it's just I already printed it once but I didn't print it with an FN fill so the whole thing kind of just got stuck in the bottom of the camera so I'm going to take you up to the computer and show you what I have come up with. Okay, so this here is the 3D model that I have created of the adapter. This is the one that actually has correctly fitting, I don't know, what are these things called? You know, the correctly fitting GoPro mount. So you can see here we have a tripod screw mount. It's, it, the, it's amazing the sort of detail these printers can print in and the fact that you can have working gears and even moving parts. There's a You can print working a working jack in one piece on this thing that moves up and down by twisting it. Which, that that's something I might print in the future. We'll, we'll have to see. But anyway, this is what we're printing today. Now you can see here that there is a ton of what we call overhang here. That is because this is touching the build plate and there's nothing to hold it up. So what we do for that is we generate supports, which as you can see when we go into the preview here, it shows this. This is actually how it's going to print. And it's going to print these supports here so that this doesn't collapse while it's printing. Now in the support settings for this in particular model, we're going to go with 80 degrees because if we go with the default of, I believe, 50, you can see that it generates support inside of here and we really don't need that so if we go to 80 degrees it'll generate the support we need so if you're printing this model yourself which links in the description to the thing out of Thingiverse you will want to do support with 80 degree overhang now if we go back over to the recommended settings we're going to want to do a uh, layer height of uh, 1.3 millimeters which will give us high detail in order for everything to fit together and also we're gonna go and go with at least 90 but I really recommend a hundred percent infill I tried printing this before with 60 percent infill 
and the, the plastic literally got stuck in the tripod screw hole of my camera and I literally had to heat up my soldering iron and stab it down in there in order to get it out. So print this at a hundred percent infill. I know it might sound excessive but it is not excessive at all. You can also see here and cure exactly how this is going to print up layer by layer. And you can also see, for example, like let's turn the infill back down to 60. You can see how little there is actually in this tripod screw. And that it probably, you, you can clearly see why it broke. So if we go back up to 100% infill, you can see now that is going to be one big solid piece. You can also see how this is one big solid piece and how if you set it to 60% infill, the way the printer tries to conserve filament as well as time. You can see it jumped down to 58 minutes as opposed to an hour and 30. And you know, normally when you're printing something, you're probably just going to be sticking around like 30 to 40% infill. And you can see how that looks and it's actually quite cool to see how it is. And if we go down to even lower, you can see how cool it kind of is the way these printers work as far as doing the grid pattern and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to set this back up to 100% infill and we're going to shove this micro SD card into the computer because we put the file on a micro SD card in order for the printer to read it and print it and it saves it to what's called a g-code file so you can see here GoPro to tripod version 3 dot g-code it was saved to that so it's I think we're ready to bring it on over to the printer I'm just gonna double check that all the settings are good here and that we shouldn't have any more issues so we're going with yep everything looks pretty good here so it's time to go over to the printer. The 3D printer has finally been revealed. Here it is. So, obviously the first thing I'm going to do is turn it on. And I'm going to take you through how we're going to print this. So, let me just get you a close-up of the screen here. Okay, so now it's not the best angle in the world. However, you can totally see what's going on. And maybe I'll even straighten this out and post a little bit. So, you can see here We've got move, print, preheat, and move. So the first thing we're going to do before we get printing is we're going to preheat this. Now this particular filament of PLA works best at 205, I found, with a bed temperature of 60. So now we're just going to, you know, wait on that to heat up. And I'll also grab the micro SD card here from the uh, computer. Now this micro SD card here is a... 256 megabyte micro SD card that these printers actually come with. Yes, I said megabyte, not gigabyte. These 3D models are really, really, really small. We're talking like maybe 7, 8, 10, maybe 15 megs a piece if you're talking something very complicated. They're, they don't take up very much storage at all. And this 256 megabyte micro SD card they include is more than adequate to hold multiple 3D models, as well as the software Cura to control this printer, although I don't recommend you use what they put on this micro SD card because it's a very outdated version and they have a much nicer new one in my opinion. You can see that it's heating up. So I'll be back once it's done heating up. Okay, so now the printer is heated up. So while it's heating, it's going to produce this string which I showed. So before you start printing, you want to grab this and pull it straight down. Not to the side because it'll get stuck to the extruder and cause problems while it's printing. And also you want to be, you know, very careful not to touch that because you'll definitely have a very nasty burn. So now we're going to go back over here to the screen so that we can get this, get this thing printing. Alright, sorry about that cut and the even worse angle. I've got a time lapse camera right there and I had to adjust the angles for you to be able to see all this. So now we're just going to go ahead to print, select our model, GoPro to tripod V3, 
get the temperatures all good. And now we can watch this thing go. is finished so the printer comes with this little plastic thing which a lot of times doesn't get stuff off it never really gets anything off I've got this uh, metal tool here that always gets everything off there we go so you can see all of our support material right here you can also see that the printer prints a little thing around the print as well as here where it just kind of primes the extruder. I'll get that off in a second. We're going to turn the printer off. Okay, so here is the finished product. So we're going to... First of all, I'm going to turn the ISO down a little bit. We're going to... This all the way... This usually just breaks off. Sometimes it requires a little bit of help, but usually you can just kind of pull it off all right there it is let's see how it fits and it needs a little bit of clean up there so you can see there's some slight imperfections there which are keeping it from screwing in properly so just gonna take some of these pliers and pull that off all right it should be good now all righty there's that so that screws in the bottom of the camera. And now we've got our handle, which fits which fits nice and snugly now. So we're actually gonna put it on this way so that the little mount thingy is on the bottom. So here's this. And where's our little nut at? We can put that there. Tighten that up. And now this isn't 
going anywhere. So there we go, that is a successful 3D print. And you can see we can unscrew the camera and we can screw it back on without any sort of problem like we had with the last version of this. And everything's all good, so yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you later.